broken glass effect. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fake broken glass effect, 3D, slightly 3D, using Luminar and using the Add Image Layer option and also the Blending options. And it's a good way, once you see the video, to build up your knowledge of uh, blending options within the layers itself. All the files used in this video will be down below in the description for download and they're free for you to use. There's not too many in this one, but there is a few that you could use and perhaps you will. As you know, Luminar only has the one brush, various sizes and various things that you can do with that brush, but it only has the one brush currently. Photoshop, for example, has lots of different brushes and people have created brushes and downloaded them and you can use these within uh, the software of Photoshop. I really like the dispersion effect and the distortion effect in Photoshop. And I don't use it too often, but I do enjoy the process of creating it. So I wanted to see how you could create a similar type of thing in Luminar. And hopefully by watching the video, you'll see what I mean. It has to be done a different way, but that was the fun in trying to discover how to do it. And that's, for me, that's what I really like about software and the thought process behind it, because you know what you want and you need to find a way to get it. So it's that discovery that I enjoy. And that's why I use the tagline, explore, imagine, create. Because I like to explore different softwares to get to the final realization of what I'm wanting for an image. So as I said, all the files are down below, except for the portrait. I purchased that portrait from Shutterstock to do this video because we are in isolation. I can't get out to shoot portraits like the rest of you. Uh, so I purchased that for the sake of this video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, what we're gonna do with this image uh, that I've purchased from Shutterstock is we are going to add the glass effect to it. And I'm gonna show you how quickly and easily you can do that. So. First thing we're going to do is add new image layer. And for this, we are going to add broken glass, the white and black, not the black and white, and I'll explain why later. So broken glass five, and that will drop onto the screen. All these are available down below in the description. What we're going to do is we're going to go into Lighten. So you see here in Lighten what happens. I've created the template to go over this, shall we call it that. I've created the template that goes over this in two shades of black. And because of that, what happens is, if I leave that in Lighten, what happens is, I'll click Lighten. What happens is you get the fake 3D effect. It's not brilliant, but it gives you that fake effect. So if we leave it in Lighten, it doesn't look as good as I intended when it was created for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into screen and you'll see now that we have more edges. Now some of them look quite random and they could be highlighted better, but it's because of the blending modes that this happens. I could have added more in. When I added more of the white in, the effect became a little less apparent. So that's why I've left it with the two shades of black. That's it, that's it done. So there's the broken glass effect with Luminar and the file. The other thing you can do is you can go in and you can create more and more effects for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one more effect for this file. And I'm going to get in here and I'm going to rasterize this for this example, simply because of time. You can stamp the layer. I'm unsure whether PC allows you to rasterize, so I don't know. So I'm just working with a Mac here for this. So I now have that there. So that's rasterized. That's all the effects applied to that layer. So what I'm going to do is turn that layer off. Back into original base layer, and I'm going to add a new image layer. This time I am going to take the inverted one. And I'm going to drop that one. And now that that one's on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a different blending mode. So I could go in here, darken, we'll begin to lose the kind of 3D effect. Multiply, I quite like the multiply effect, so I might go back to that one. Color burn, and as you scroll through these, you'll see each one and how it works. Overlay, soft light, hard light, and you can choose whatever one you want. For this example, I am going to sit with lighting. 
then if I turn that layer back on, I have that effect. And what I can do here is I can actually cycle through these again. Although it's, it's rasterized now, it's sitting as a normal layer because I rasterized it and kept or applied all the effects to that one layer. So what I can do now is I can get into darken and get different effect. Multiply, color burn, lighten, you lose everything. Screen, lose it even more. Overlay begins to look very bad graphic design. Soft light, hard light, difference, subtract, hue, color, luminosity. So it depends what one of these you actually really like. For me, for this one, I'm going to leave it at normal because what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to edit a mask and I'm going to add a gradient mask to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start in the middle here and click and drag. And I'll make sure it's as vertical as I can get it. And then I'm going to close it in tight. So you can see that we can do this. And I'm just going to click done for that. So you can see, yes, there's a hard line. And it looks as if the image is broken up. But there's not much going on with that. If I go back in here and I go darken. Multiply. Color burn lighting, so on and so forth. You can see where I'm going with this. I can also go in, choose the mask, invert it, and it swaps it straight over to the other side. So it just depends what effect you're after. Again, I could copy up the broken, I could copy up this layer here, the broken glass layer, and I'm going to duplicate the layer and I am going to move it up to the top. So we have this now. And again, I can go in, darken. Depends what you want to do with your image. Applies it to the, the top wheel that it's on, but it affects how you see through the image. So darken, multiply. So you get the idea with this, and it's just a fun thing to try with your images. So as I said, these files are down below for you to download. But before we go there, I'm going to show you something else. Okay, what I've done is I've brought in a few more examples for you, and these files, as I say, are down below. What I've done is I've added a new image layer for brush 5, and I've left the blend mode to normal just to show you it's the same process through and through. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to choose one of the blend modes. I've got to admit, screen happens to be my favourite for this style of imagery, but you can choose whatever one you want soft light, hard light, uh, back to screen. I'll leave it at screen for this and then rasterize the layer. So the next layers that I open up, I've already done that process too. So hopefully that will let you see how they come in. So from that layer, I can get into brush four and I've got that effect because it's set to difference. If I go back in, I can go darken, multiply, color burn, lighten. So you can see it has an effect all the way through. I'm going to leave that one at difference just now. I'm then going to turn on brush three. Brush three happens to be one of my favorites. So that one's there for you as well. And then the last one I'll turn on is brush one. You'll notice with brush one, I had a wee accident up here when I was applying it. So it's got a straight line here, but I'm not going to move it just to show you the examples. As soon as they're rasterized or stamped layers, they go back to a normal blending mode. In that normal blending mode, you can then blend them back down through. So if I go into darken, you see the difference. That's combining some of the uh, layers below. Color burn, lighten, screen, overlay, soft light. So you get the idea with these. Some of them work, some of them don't. You get all different effects. So hopefully that gives you something to try and something to have fun with. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully it lets you see just how to create different effects with that. And hopefully it's fun. It doesn't have to be just applied to portraits. You can use these files on any image at all, be it landscape, product, whatever. It's just a fun thing to try. And that's the main idea of it. But I suppose the learning, the blending of the layers and what works and what doesn't and what combination of blends of layers 
that read through each other work best. That's also a good thing to learn as well. Doesn't mean you'll remember it straight away, but you'll have a good idea on what blending options to use depending on the file you use. So as I say, hopefully you got something from that and hopefully you enjoyed watching the video as well. If you did enjoy watching the video, please consider checking out some of the videos in the channel below. If you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be absolutely fantastic. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.